Um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jack and I'll uh, be moderating now for your uh, for this event, uh, Building Brand Promoting in the Pandemic, um, how to define your brand and your company's brand in a world defined by COVID. Uh, join us today as we learn about tips and tricks for creating your own personal brand to market yourself, as well as ideas on how companies can find opportunities in this pandemic to market themselves. So I'm excited to be joined by Will Rush, Jessica Swig, and Karina Cuevas. So, um, to get started, um, we'll have the panelists introduce themselves. So does anybody want to go first? Uh, let's go, Will. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, my name is William Rush. I recently graduated from Northwestern in um, June of 2020. I, um, I kind of bounced around a couple of internships. I wasn't really like sure what, what I wanted to do right when I graduated. Um, so a lot of that like had to do with building my own personal brand, like finding the industry I wanted to get into. And uh, and that's kind of the main reason I wanted to like hop on and, and share with you guys is to to give some advice um, kind of coming out of college in a pandemic because it was a really weird thing for me. Um, um, so yeah, I, I, I worked for free, um, had a couple internships. I, I did some data and analytics. Um, then I started working at a, like a crypto capital firm. Um, and then from there, I got my first like actual full-time job working at CoinFlip, which is uh, one of the world's largest crypto ATM providers. Um, and it's a it's in a really cool space. It's we're doing a lot of really cool things. And and I've also and now I've been focusing a lot on building the brand of CoinFlip yeah. there um, as as a member of the business development team. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited to to share with you guys and and also hear um, from from uh, some, of, some of you who may be more experienced than, than I am and, yeah. and how you guys have, have learned to build your brands and, and the, the brands of the companies you work at. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome, thanks for sharing, Will. Um, it's uh, always interesting because you're kind of coming right out of Northwestern, kind of coming uh, out of school, how you kind of built that brand even even recently. I mean, you haven't, you haven't been maybe out there as long, um, but it's, it's cool to, to see that you're still pursuing that. Um, all right, uh, Jessica, you can go. You can go next. So, hi everybody! So grateful to be here. This is Jessica Zweig, and I am the founder and CEO of the Simply Be Agency, which is a personal branding company. Uh, definitely older than I look, a lot younger than I think I am. So, I've been um, around the block for almost, uh, you know. 15 years. Uh, I started my first entrepreneurial endeavor when I was 26 and I ran my my business for seven years. It was an online magazine for women in the city of Chicago that became the biggest online platform. We reached show local readers and it was during that time I really realized the power of a personal brand as face and founder of a company. And when I left Cheeky, that was the name of my business, to start what is now Simply Be, I got clients overnight. I didn't make a single sales phone call. I was able to just amass tons of revenue within a week um, by virtue of my platform that I didn't even realize I had. And this really, really build my brands intentionally and then help teach other people to do the same. And so now Simply Be is an internationally recognized personal branding firm. Um, it's a seven, multi seven figure company. Uh, we work with clients on every single continent, Fortune 500 brands down to startups and um, not-for-profits. I just wrote a book and it was published in February called B, and it is um, a how-to guide um, with apologies on how to put personal. So I wrote a book on it. I have a lot to say about it. I'm really excited to, to talk about it and I'm really grateful to, of course, talk to, to students as uh, Mark on your um, futures because personal branding is a necessity. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing, Jessica. Um, it's really cool to see your your background in it um, and that you have all of this experience that you can share with the world. Um, as as that book goes, um, if you want to throw that in the chat or if you want to um, sh show people about that, I'm sure a lot of people would love to to hear about that. And we'll get. I guess we'll get probably more into that as when you're presenting. Um, all right, Karina. Um, I put my um. I know you threw something um in the in the chat about you wanting to share something. So you um, you can go next, and then I sent my my email to you. And if you click on people and click on my name, um, you can find my email and, then, and just send that over to me, and then I can definitely share that. But, yeah. I, I just did. I just sent it to you. So appreciate. Okay. No, no worries. I'll uh, I'll get that pulled up. But you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Great. Thanks. 
Um, so hi everyone, my name is Karina Cuevas Paul, and I am a talent and organizational development consultant at Lockheed Martin Space. So I am located in Denver, Colorado, but I am actually from the suburbs of Chicago. So um, Northwest, I like always heard about it and always knew about it. I'm from Oswego, um, so kind of smaller near Aurora. But yeah, that's where I was from. And then I um, I went to school at Brigham Young University in Utah, and then got a job at Lockheed Martin after that. So yeah, I guess how my journey on how I really got to branding, I, I know Jessica, this is like life passion and you know, um, like William, you guys are like totally very involved in that. I actually um, put together this presentation for a, um, a Hispanic organization of leadership and awareness. It's our OLA organization within Lockheed, um, just about how to build your personal brand. And so I just took that presentation and modified it and then um, use it in some other capacities at Lockheed where people just ask for to kind of be educated on building your personal brand. So I'm by no, by no means an expert, just a facilitator um, of certain items and put this together. So yeah, that's kind of my journey here, but I'm excited to be here. Awesome. We're excited to have you. Thank you so much for, for joining and for also giving people your knowledge about working at Lockheed, working in, a, in the corporate world. Um, I just got your presentation. Let me pull it up real quick. Great. Yeah, I know Lexi told me that um, that we met last night, and she was like, "Oh, it only really works if you put it on Google um, PowerPoint, you know, the Google Drive or Google Slides." Um, if okay. you're and I was like, "Oh, I don't have time for that." Oh, no, 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 no worries. It'll work. Um, I'm just going to present it. It might be a little smaller than it would be with the Google Slides, um, but I'm, we're just going to make it work. Uh, okay. So here we go. Um, I think I have it pulled up in the other tab. Um, let's see if I can just zoom in a bit on it. Um, and then we're just going to, I'll just kind of go from there. Um, it might not be, I'll just have to scroll through it, but we're going to make it work. Okay. Wait, so am I going first? I thought I was going second, but either way, it doesn't matter. Ah, um, my bad. Um, I was looking at our run of show. So, um, who was uh will you gonna go first right yeah yeah sure okay yeah. Sorry, no worries hey, i got it pulled up so you're all, you're all good to go um but we'll have will just share a little bit about his story first How yeah um go yeah ahead. so i i'll just give a little background like myself and, and my own journey um mm -hmm. obviously i haven't like been out of college for that long so i don't have a whole lot of professional work experience but i do think that i can offer you guys a little bit of value in that like I've gone through the decision of finding your first job and and like finding your like calling or or whatever you know whatever that is to everyone um, like very recently and 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 in this environment and uh, and and yeah so so I came to Northwestern in in 2016 I came in as like a pre med major really had no idea what I wanted to do I just like thought being a doctor would be cool and then um, and then I I like tried to do econ. I ended up like switching majors a bunch of times and like ended up doing econ and learning an organizational change. I thought I wanted to do like consulting or something like that. Um, and I did like a couple, like I did like a data science internship, uh, like a couple other internships. Um, I worked for like Congressman Ro Khanna, who's the like Silicon Valley uh, Congressman. That, I mean, um, tried out like politics, um, tried out a lot of stuff. And then I ended up, um, like becoming more and more passionate about crypto and the crypto was something like i got into um buying bitcoin in high school i would literally go up to this guy who lived in bob hall at northwestern which is just one of the dorms and i would uh and i'd like give him money in cash and he'd send me bitcoin um and like i didn't i didn't hold on to any of it unfortunately obviously i'd i'd uh it, it's one of my larger regrets in life um but it's funny how life works. Like I, I, like I said, after I graduated, I bounced between a couple of internships and then I interviewed for this um, crypto ATM company. And the guy who is the CEO of the, the company, Daniel Polotsky, he was actually the guy who was selling me Bitcoin out of his dorm um, when I was in high school. And I was, cause, cause I grew up in Evanston. Um, so, so he was interviewing me and I was like, do you remember me? Like you sold me Bitcoin like five years ago, six years ago. And, and I think it's it's kind of crazy how um, how much like I don't know at least in my experience how much like connections and the connections that you make not necessarily even the connections you have can can help you build your own brand and, and further yourself into whatever field you may want to go into. So for me that was 
um, that was like building my brand amongst like someone who worked there and 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 like friends I had through the the crypto space, and then also like some person that I had met, you know, three or four times back five years earlier um, that remembered me, and I remembered him, and then and that kind of led me to getting uh, to getting my current job, and then. And then since then, I've been working on like a ton of projects. It's a super like startup vibe at CoinFlip. So I've been uh, working in like doing a bunch of work in business development primarily. So reaching out to companies, like facilitating partnerships, um, popping on a lot of calls. And I've also been doing some work in finance and uh, and marketing. And uh, I don't know, some, some of the aspects that I would say are, are challenging um, with building a brand at least at Coinflip is like the industry is, of crypto ATMs is like a very high margin industry for a lot of people involved. So a lot of these companies are like very scummy, will charge you like 10 to 20 percent fees. Um, obviously, you have to these are machines that like take cash and then give you crypto. So it takes a lot of like physical manpower to get the cash in and out of these machines. You have armored trucks, you have you have people maintaining the machines, people actually building the machines, installing them, et cetera. But most of these companies like are very uh, charge very high fees, and it's like very unfair to the consumer. So one of the reasons I'm like comfortable working at CoinFlip and something that makes it easy to like sell our ourselves as a brand is that we charge like a six point nine nine percent fee, and then we'll match any like lower fees. So um, so that that makes it easier. We have like. 24 seven in-house customer support, um, which is kind of rare for the industry. And that that's also like kind of on the same wavelength of like helping our customers um, and, and like just facilitating the easiest possible transactions and the fairest possible transactions that we can for them. So that that's another thing. But, uh, but what I will say is like, regardless of like how, how easy you and, and efficient you try and make your product for your customers, there's always going to be issues. There's always going to be, you know, sales that don't go through, prob like random things coming up. Um, you know, for example, we recently like listed Doge coin on our on our machines, and like it was like a huge success. A ton of people were were buying Doge, and then like at some point we just see uh, like you know five ten transactions that are just failing. We're like, what's going on? What's going on? We're emailing everybody trying to figure it out. We end up calling each person individually whose transaction failed. And telling them like, look, we, your transaction bill, we're, so, we're sending this to your wallet plus a little extra um, just for your trouble. And like, we'll give you like a discount code for your next transaction. And I'll say, and I will say like, of all the people we called, most of them will give you like a really like short response, be kind of upset about it. Like, and, and we'll be like, oh, all right, like just assume you're a random customer service person who doesn't really care about them and is just kind of doing what they're told. But there's one or two people that you'll get um, that will just like be so appreciative and will be like, thank you so much. Uh, that's amazing. And, and, and it, that's, that's the challenge to building a brand is for all the positive things you do, you'll only get recognized for like a small amount of them. And for every negative thing your brand does, you will be like completely destroyed by it. And, uh, and I think that that is kind of, is kind of similar for like, you you building your own brand if like you can do like a ton of positive things you might not get recognized for very many of them you might not be credited for very many of them um, but the ones you are credited for like it'll feel really good and and you got to just make sure that you're not doing a whole lot of like things that can negatively impact your brand because uh, i feel like they they have like a much more lasting effect yeah well thanks for sharing thanks for going into a little bit of your story about how that impacted you even from the college years, right? I think a lot of us are like, I can't build my brand until um, I get out of college, until I have like a, an opportunity to get a job. And I think maybe you didn't even you didn't even know that you were doing that in college, right? You're just meeting a you're just meeting a guy, you're just buying crypto, right? And that led to a job, that led to a brand. Just meeting people sometimes, even getting your name out there is is your brand, right? So um, that's that's always something. So thanks for sharing that. And and that tip at the end was awesome um, about. You really, you have to know, it's like, it's like life, right? In, in general, right? Everybody remembers the negative, um, but the positives kind of get lost. So if you're doing everything right, nobody says anything. But if you do one thing wrong, you're immediately like doing everything wrong. So yeah, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. All right. We'll jump on into Karina now. Um, you ready? Yes, I am. I don't see the charts at all. 
Do I have to click on something or? Um, so for the presentation that you sent me, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to share my screen and then it'll it'll pop on up. Okay, thanks. No worries. <laughs> let me do that real quick. And then it, it, I, I did trans. It should work. So let me just present and then it should work. Perfect. Okay. Do you see so, that? Yeah, I can see that. Um, appreciate uh, Thank you. And I guess before I really jump in, I want to let you all know that my section is very interactive. So I'm going to... I know we can't invite everybody up on stage all the time, like all, all the time. I'm used to doing this over Zoom. Um, so if you just want to use the chat as much as possible as we kind of go through this, that would be great. So um, we're just going to do that. So make sure you're ready to type your little hearts out as I kind of ask questions or um, ask for your feedback and ideas. Okay. So, all right. Um, go to the next slide. Okay, so this is again just a little bit about me. I work at Lockheed Martin Space. So if you're wondering what a talent organizational development consultant is, um, I basically just, instead of Lockheed Martin hiring an external consulting agency to do org designs or change management or talent management, they've just hired internal consultants. And so I have client groups within Lockheed Martin Space that I support regularly just all the time as those things are going on. So that's kind of what I do specifically. Um, and again, this is just my opinion on what personal brand is, but yeah. Okay. So first things first, I want you to like, just type in the chat. Okay, this is as we go through, I'm going to, it's just a quick little thing. We're going to go zoom through a couple of these. So it shouldn't be too difficult, but I want you all to type in the chat. What is this? What company? I know, you know, <laughs> okay, great. No one person. Yes, you're right. Um, <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Okay. Next slide. Okay, what's this one? Perfect. Great job. Okay, next. Perfect, Microsoft. Yes. Great job, everyone. Okay, next. Nope, not Honda, Mercedes. Yep, it's Mercedes. Good job, everyone. Okay, next. That can be kind of tricky. <laughs> yes, it's Ralph Lauren. But yes, kind of basically Polo too, but yes, Ralph Lauren. Great, next. This one's like my favorite store, spending way too much time in there. <laughs> Target, great. Can we all? Awesome. All right, next one. Yep. Oh, this is a tough one. Let's see if you guys know it. Nope, not Stitch Fix. No one know this one? No, not black market, not, no. Oh my gosh, okay, well you, I, if you ever like go to the store and you want some really nice socks, these are stance socks. And they're so, it's like, I love them. They're super high quality. So, yeah. All right. It's okay, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Ah, oh, this is a good one, come on. Everyone's gotta know this. Um, yeah, good job. Okay, Walmart. Woo okay, so before we go to the next slide, I want to ask you guys again if you can just like type in the chat box. What are some things that come to your mind when you think about a personal brand, or when you think about the brand of these companies? Like, what do you think about? You see this, and then what do you think of? It's not meant to be a trick question. Low prices, sure. Yeah, kind of what they advertise, you think of, great. Bright logos, their social media, commercials, okay, great. 
Some of the other things that you might think of too might be the quality of the products that they produce, right? Um, you might feel a difference between going to going to Walmart or going to Target or going to Apple um, in the stores. If you walk into their stores, what kind of vibe do you feel? Um, you can think of what products exactly it is that they are producing. So all of those things are different components of you know of their brand and what they've been able to go out. Their leaders, sure, that's huge too. I think I know we've known a lot of Apple's leaders specifically, you know, and uh, different companies like that. So it's great. We can go to the next slide. So I really just want to build the parallel. You can go to the next or build this out too. Um, your, you know, truly like what a corporate brand is, is they're going to communicate their value to their customer and if they're going to figure out what it makes them stand out from the competition, it's going to influence their perceived quality, like I mentioned, their personality. Um, you can think of what their personality is and a personal brand is very much like that. So it's who you are, what you stand for, the values that you embrace, how you express those values, the way that you communicate your identity to people. Um, what do people think of, whether it's your teammates in college or um, your, you know, your people you work with on projects, like what do they think of when they think of your name? If they're put on a project with you, like what do they think of? Um, that is your brand. And it really like all of that plays a part into who, what your brand is created to be. Next slide. So um, I know you're all students, so this may not be like super relevant quite yet, but like if you build this out, um, it may be relevant as far as like, you getting internships or getting opportunities like that. So about 85% of managers report a job candidate's personal brand influences their hiring decisions. Your brand is an influence. You can finish building that up too. Um, whether you're the right fit for, whether you're not, whether you are or not the right fit for a role, um, your credibility in your field, your reputation and talent reviews, like as a talent an organizational development consultant. Like I'm in a lot of talent reviews and I can't tell you enough how often your brand plays such a huge role in those. Um, and also which projects you're chosen to work on. So it's pretty impactful. So I wanna pose the question to you all, what are some consequences of not building your personal brand? And I'll wait for you to type it out. No awareness. Good. You're a ghost, sure. Well, other people build it for you. Yes, huge. Great. Keep it coming. For your company, definitely checking Glassdoor for reviews is, is important less likely to get opportunities. Awesome. So yeah, if you, um, I'm sorry, Jack, were you going to say something? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, keep it coming. I was just talking to the audience. I wanted them to keep going. <laughs> no worries. Yes, less likely to get opportunities. Okay, absolutely. So like if you do not, like your personal brand is going to exist whether or not you want it to. So really, if it's either you let other people build it for you, um, like it says in the chat, or you take hold of it and you hold the reins and you figure out what you want it to be. Um, but either way, it's going to be built. So it just depends on what direction you want it to go in. Um, so go ahead to the next slide. Okay, so at Lockheed Martin, um, we define executive presence in three different ways um, or by these three specific components. And so I want to talk about what this is. What are what's some of the or what's like the biggest thing that stands out to you as you look at this chart and the percentages? Like what are some of the things that, that stand out to you? Yeah, I think for me, it's that um, it's that big big number on the left as people are trying to type in the chat. I mean, 67%, that's like tr triple everything else, you know, or like 5% is a lot more than that. Um, how you act is the most important. That's what people notice the most, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Anybody All right, else well, I haven't seen anything pop up in the chat, yeah. but um, hopefully. Well, uh, we'll see. 
All right. Oh, there you go. Hi, you have to trade with me. Yep, that's right. So really the three different components of executive presence are how you act, gravitas, how you speak, your communication, and how you look, your appearance. And so um, like what is gravitas? Gravitas is the ability to project confidence um, and maintain poise under pressure. So it's that inner confidence that you have, that poise, your credibility, um, showing grace under fire. I'm sure you could probably think of some leaders that do this really well. Um, and maybe some leaders that don't do this really well, or even people who do it really well and people who don't. Um, but it's it really is just that inner confidence that you have when you're facing a situation. It's your, I mean, it's also kind of like your body language if you're slumped over or things like that too. Like all of those things can impact your gravitas and your confidence that you're portraying to others. And then communication is all about um, how we, you exude and show that confidence in all situations. And so a lot of that, like how you exude it and show that confidence relies a lot on your communication. So the pillars are very interlinked, even though one is 67 and one is 28. Um, your communication skills can help you command a room and your gravitas will grow. So the more, I mean, I'm sure you've been in a room, per, perhaps maybe you have, if you haven't, but if you've been in a room or you're presenting to someone and you know everyone is very alert, very attentive, very engaged, and what you're saying and how that helps your confidence grow. You feel better about it. Um, however, like if you're in a room and people are kind of looking away or not paying attention or something like that, it can definitely start making your gravitas or your confidence really kind of go a little bit lower, right? And so how do you make sure you're engaging that room and getting that people to know that you're there and you're able to command it? So and when I say communication in this context, like I'm talking about excellent speaking skills and again, that ability to command a room, not necessarily resolving conflict. And then um, appearance. So that's that 5%. So even though um, it is only 5%, that doesn't mean it's not important. So as important as gravitas and communication skills are, you'll never get a chance to show them if you don't get appearance right. And so appearance is really like the filter through the other through which the other two are elevated. And so um, like there's three components of this too. There's being polished and groomed. So um, making sure that you telegraph like what you what you wear should telegraph that you take your work and those you work with very seriously. If you don't have poor grooming, it can compromise the ability for other people to take you as someone, take you or see you as someone who's going places. Um, your signature style, so figuring out whatever it is that makes you unique, whether it's fun skin socks or whether it's a, a, some sort of jewelry or necklace or whatever it is, um, keeping your signature style. And the one I think that's the most important for this is knowing your audience. So it's not necessarily how good you look, it's how appropriate you look for your audience. So if you're like in Lockheed Martin, which is a big, you know, Fortune 100 company, and um, you have, you're meeting with our executives and you're in like, a sweatshirt and like just jeans that's not going to go over very well to your for your executive presence right because it's just not the expectation that's held however if you're like at google or some startup um you don't need to dress up in like a suit and tie right like so really just know your audience know whatever audience you are speaking to and make sure you're just address like dressing appropriately for them um so that's the idea behind the executive presence there and I'll hurry up because I know I only have like probably a minute or so left. But um, this is um, something that, um, sorry, I know we probably won't have time for, but I would love for you to think of a leader who has a strong personal brand. And you can just type it in the chat box. So who's someone like when you, a leader within the media or celebrity or whoever um, that has a strong personal brand? Okay, Obama, great, definitely. For some others. Frank Ocean. I'm not sure who that is. Yeah, that, right? I think we're banned for that person. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Anything else? Anyone else? Come on. We got some, we got some people. people that were there earlier. Come on. You, you know you're there. <laughs> okay, well, I won't them. force you. Um, <laughs> Think of it in your head and just like really figure out, again, that person must have either chosen for their personal brand to be that way um, or it was made for them. And so just, again, think about those things as you think about building your personal brand. Next slide. 
there's a lot of different things that can help you develop your personal brand. There's 360 assessments, which are, you know, some provided sometimes at companies you work for, or even just leave development opportunities. Um, if you want to be able to figure out what people think about you above you as your peer, as your leaders, as your peers, as your direct reports, um, and then internships and projects. I think William made some great points on how he like put himself out there and like found people and like was able to network and get experiences with other individuals, huge in developing his brand. Um, and then LinkedIn can be a huge way to develop your brand and um, maybe getting a life coach. So a life coach helping you figure out how to build your personal brand. Um, so all of those things can be components of that. Next slide. So um, we'll just go ahead and skip over this and really just want you to be thinking about like ideas that you have that can help you build your brand. And then we can share these charts with you. I think like Alexi said that she would share these out. Jack, I don't know if you can. Of course, share yeah, we'll, we'll see to that afterwards. Um, if you, um, so if you want to figure out like, what is it? Like, how do I even get started? Like, this is kind of overwhelming. I don't know how to like start my personal brand. Um, this is just some questions that might be able to help you get started on figuring out who you are, who do you want to be known for, and like some like creating some sort of an elevator pitch to be able to make sure you are um, really showing that off. So I that's all I've got for you today. And I, you know, I just appreciate your time and attention and I'll pass it back over. All right. Well, thank you, you so much, Karina. Um, and thank you for, for being flexible with this and for, for sharing what, what you do have in, in this wonderful um, presentation here. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, if you guys, uh, anybody in the audience does have questions uh, for her, um, we're going to we're gonna have some time at the end for questions. So I'd love for you to put it in the chat now uh, and we'll get to it at the end. Um, but I just want to open that for the, for the audience right now. But Jessica, take it away. Karina, that was awesome, girl. That was really <laughs> great. I, I think that um, it's always so interesting seeing other people, you know, share their expertise. And I, you know, run a business and I've done a million presentations myself and I, I always learn. So thank you for that really beautiful explanation. And I think it was really, really helpful to simplify, like to break it down and really understand that your brand is who you are being and doing or saying. And I just, you know, I feel like I can add value here as someone who is um, older. I'm <laughs> like, it's, I'm a lot older than you guys think I am. I'm definitely, um, you know, been around the block and my company employs young people, right? So I'm 39, just to tell you what my, my age is. And the majority of my staff is 22 to 30. Okay. So, and I've actually hired my interns right out of Northwestern. Like I, we have a partnership with Northwestern. In fact, um, we partner with the Medill School of Journalism. So the JR program, which is where students come to a job for a quarter versus school, they come to me. So I've had the great opportunity to coach, mentor, work with, and ultimately hire a lot of young people right out of college. So I thought I would use my time to really share what I've seen and what I think really works doesn't. So Karina broke it down really beautifully. There's some really powerful principles of what a personal brand really is and what it can actually do. And if I were just to sort of, you know, add my flavor to that, it's sort of really understanding, you know, your brand is your what and your strategy is your how. And what I mean by that is you have to know your message. Like you are a brand just like Mercedes and Target's brand. So what is the brand of you? And really thinking about Karina's point, like what do you want people to think? Like what's the headline? What's your slogan? Really coming up with that feeling, those words, that signature message that is ownable to you. If you can do that, you have taken leaps and bounds down the personal branding path, truly. And then I want you to think about three to four cornerstone topics, areas of passion, areas of expertise, that light you up, that you know you can do them, talk about endlessly, right? And I'm sure you might think in your mind, maybe I've gotten this question a lot in, in um, presentations and conversations with younger people. Well, I'm only 21 or I'm only 20 or I'm only in college. Like, what's my expertise? You have decades of life experience as a young person that I as an employer want. There's such value in 
Generation Z, I think it is, and young millennials right now, like that my, a company, every company needs. So don't underestimate your value as a young person by the pure vantage point of your years. You have something inherently valuable. And so trusting that and knowing that is part of the job. But the second part is naming it like, OK, like, well, like you're into crypto, like that's amazing. I know nothing about crypto, but I, I who are in finance and technology. And so you being on my team has value to what I'm doing as the CEO because you, you have an area that I don't. So really looking at that and being really clear of like what you know and owning it is, is paramount. So that's the message, right? And really thinking about what are those three to four things? And then how can I show up online sharing my knowledge? Because I'm gonna tell you one fact, we look you up. I get your resume and then I Google you and I look at your LinkedIn and I look at your personal website and I look at your Instagram and I look at your Facebook. And if you're telling a story about yourself that is consistent, that is authentic, that is professional, you know, I often get the question like, well, should I keep my stuff private? Whatever personal choice, but if it's not appropriate for a potential employer to see it, it's probably just not appropriate on the internet. So there's that. So know that your digital footprint matters right and you have the opportunity to drive it you have the opportunity to tell your own narrative and when people think of your here you you don't it's going to be what other people say about you not what you say about you and the way that we do that i would recommend is zooming up and thinking beyond social media yes it matters that you have an active fresh recent social presence but are you writing blogs are you creating videos are you getting yourself maybe on a podcast or are you starting your own podcast? How can you be create, creating core content that positions you as an expert, not just as someone who has a really great social channel? Because I don't think anyone on the call is really a social media influencer. Maybe you are, and if that's cool, that's cool. But really, I think what we're only. And so media community and, and drive us. But I talk about this in my book to really think about where who I am and share self. I will tell you that the kids, I shouldn't say kids, the young people who have websites, have blogs, portfolios, who have videos that I can watch or I can go see, have a leg up. Like they have an edge in the interview process, like because I can learn more about them beyond their resume. So there's that. Build a platform. You don't need a job or to be an interviewer to have a platform as one opportunity to have one. So that's number one. Number two is the online, excuse me, offline presence that Karina really did speak about. So like body language and the way that you make eye contact and the way you style your hair or dress, like you don't have to be polished and perfect. You have to be you and you have to be aware. Frank, when you're interviewing, that stuff does matter. Like I've had young people apply for like assistant type roles who come with like like a suit, off links. Show that it matters to you. Take it seriously. Show up early. Don't if you're not early. Truly, like that stuff matters. If you have an interview at nine o'clock in the morning, show up at eight forty-five. And I also want to say something else that's really, really important for as you're thinking about your. Brands. I don't want you to underestimate what you've done that might not be related to the job that you're applying for. So I have a couple um, people who work for me, like one of the people who worked for me worked at Starbucks. And I like right out of college, she got a poli sci degree and like worked multiple jobs and was coming into an agency that was completely off the mark of what was on his resume. But he was willing to tell his whole story. He didn't hide that he was an actor. He didn't hide that he was worked at Starbucks. He didn't have, he volunteered at his, it was like, I was able to see in a 360 capacity, this person works really hard. This person can deal with hard people. This person is not afraid to get up really early and like do the thing. And so as we enter the workforce, knowing that we don't have to pretend to be anything other than we are, and that that is an asset, your eclectic, multidimensional, multifaceted, multi-passionate self, is your brand. 
clarifying what you really want to lead with, that's that's up to you based on you know who's the audience, right? But don't underestimate the, where you've been because that it will blow your mind as far as like what employers are actually really looking for. And I'll also leave this one like with this group because it's super important. I don't know how much time I have left, but um, I really see this, I, I guess I'd call it a struggle that young people have in the workplace, like feeling like, do I have imposter syndrome? Do I belong here? You know, do I, you know, am I respected? Everyone else is more experienced. I'm intimidated. Like I can feel that energy um, from young people. That my biggest piece of advice to all of you who are sort of resonating at that level to be as authentic and transparent and honest and an integrity as you can be. Um, don't how you really feel and like let things sort of fester and you know talk amongst your you know teammates versus like in front of your leadership, um, that's also your brand. Your brand is your reputation. So kind, be conscious, um, treat people how you wanna be treated, um, and vocalize when you're struggling. We can't help you unless we know you're struggling. And there's, it's a two way ideally a workplace where your leadership can embrace that um, but I think that the future of business and the future of leadership are young people who are embodied in their own brands who know their value and who come from a place of service um, not ego so advice to, to the young folks on this call which I know there are many and i um, happy to have any conversations offline. And I know I didn't go into like a done a tactical stuff. If you want to really know how to build your brand. In fact, when I wrote my book proposal to get an agent to get a publisher, I had to identify my target audience. And it graduating from college on the path to entrepreneurship and living a life and building a career with meaning because I know that this generation. And so please pick up my book, it's $21 on Amazon right now. And it literally walks you through what I charge 15,000 plus 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 dollars for my clients. Like I gave it away. It's like all in here, step-by-step step with tactical methodologies. Um, you will you will learn a lot and you'll build your platform when you're done with it. So that's what I got. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Jessica, um, all that knowledge and wisdom. At, and check out her book. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the link is in the chat. Uh, just scroll up a little bit. There's a, there's a link up there. Check that out. Um, just by what you said today and, and your, I mean, what you've gone through, your wisdom, I'm sure that book is, has a lot of good stuff in it. Um, she put it in the chat again. So check it out. Um, it seems like the, uh, um, the chat is, or the, the people in the chat are a little shy today. So I'm going to ask some questions and hopefully people in the audience will be brave and start asking questions but if not then i will continue going until we're done so the first question i have for everyone is um because this is kind of um the the title here and the day what we're trying to focus on today is kind of um the covid 19 pandemic kind of how did that affect everything um how can we apply that or like how is that going to affect things in the future how is it affected now so does the, the, the pandemic in this online world affect building your brand like how do you switch things like what are some new ways to build brand or what is what's what's most important now these, uh, these days well you want to go first you just unmuted yourself yeah yeah sure um i mean this kind of segues to like an interesting parallel that i saw between um jessica and, and karina's presentations which was um that like karina was saying that uh five percent of executive presence is appearance and when you're online that can be all of your presence. And and to me, what Jessica was saying is like, when you provide some like depth to your um, to your brand, then you're kind of giving yourself the rest of that 95%. Um, you know, so so I I think it is like super difficult. Like for me personally, I, I, I never like created like a portfolio. I worked on a bunch of projects, but never like, you know, was never able to, to save them and present them to other people, mostly like 
confidential like NDA signed stuff and and I'm you know not super outspoken on like LinkedIn I, I don't write a lot of blogs so and that's just not something that I feel comfortable doing so for me it's kind of like it, it kind of is like all of like social interaction like to, to get every job I've had like it's like presenting myself as, as well as I can like present myself as confident and it's hard to do that in a pandemic like when you're when you can't meet people you can't go to career fair um, so yeah, I mean, I like it's it's just it's just way harder in my opinion. And and if you want to like, if you want to get what you want, you just need to like constantly keep pushing. I mean, the bright side is everybody's on their computers. Like, everybody's used to Zoom calling, so it, you don't even have to leave your house. If you if you grind all day and you sit down on your computer, you'll be able to network. You know, probably definitely better than you could online before, and you know, probably almost as well as you could. If you're in person, um, if you're if you're working hard enough, so that that's uh, that's pretty much all the, the advice I have to give on the topic. All right, yeah, thanks for sharing. I think uh, as you're as you're mentioning there, two points. Uh, like it is it is really hard um, when you're when you're online and but but meeting people everywhere is like is ridiculous. At this conference alone, like there's like I don't know probably fifty or more people from China. There's like people all over the world that have, have registered for this one. You could just reach out to them. You can connect with them. Um, there's people from all over the world um that are easily connected with you can you should meet everybody from any spot in the world pretty much nowadays so that's definitely a big plus all right karina do you want to share anything yeah i mean i think the biggest thing for me i feel like it's a little different because i'm in like corporate america right so it's just like different and i'm i'm not i i think the way that building a brand has changed within lockheed martin at least or like in the corporate world is I can't emphasize like that executive presence component and that but I know well you touched on that again but um you know the sure if you're on zoom calls all day making sure that you when you are speaking you're able to command a room or you're able to influence people and you're able to get things done or you know just drive towards whatever it is that you want your brand to be all the time um and just keeping that at the forefront of your mind you know like even in this environment I know some people and again, I can't emphasize it enough. Like I, I work with a lot of our executives and some of our VPs are like, after a Zoom call, they're like, did you see what that person was wearing? I think they were wearing a sweatshirt when they were presenting. Like they literally talk about those things. And so like, it's just your your brand is always happening all the time or, you know, and so I just, I don't know, for me during a pandemic, even if you're on Zoom or even if you're just on a phone call, how are you talking? And you know, how are you addressing people and how are you making other people feel by like the things that you're saying, like all that stuff influences your brand um, and the way that you're connecting with others. And I think, you know, Jessica and Will touch on really great points on making sure you have that credibility behind you too while you're doing that, you know, and like whatever it is that you want to be known for, building that credibility, but then also being able to express yourself in that executive presence type way is super critical. So. That's my take on that. There you go. Thanks for sharing. I think uh, one thing that we were actually uh, that you hit on that's really important. We were actually talking about this, getting ready for this conference. Um, it was uh, the digital fact that you're always on when you're on Zoom, right? You're never. People are always looking at you, even when you, when you're moderating in this setting. Even it's like even worse than Zoom because um, in Zoom you're like a little tiny box, and then there's a presentation. But in this one, it's like always the same size. So you, I, I mean, it goes down a little bit, but um, you. Uh, you kind of always have to be cognizant of what you're looking at, what you're like looking towards, what you're smiling, you're not smiling, if you have like what your face looks like in the normal setting. So that's definitely a, a good a good point. All right, Jessica, what do you got? Any any advice? COVID changed everything when it came to personal branding. Um, you don't or to manage your online presence. It's a must have, not a nice to have. And I have, you know, over a hundred clients and they grew in 2020, like, nice. because we, they had pivot. It was great. But able to break through sort of like the only ability to connect in person. Now we can reach everyone across the world from our living rooms, like in back to back. And I, like, I'll speak for myself when I launched this book. I had to do a virtual launch and I was able to sell more people because of the power of virtual. And so that is an opportunity versus a burden or like 
now we've been completely disconnected and we don't have this this way of being anymore. It's like, I saw the silver lining from day one, even though I was stressful. And I think um, really just spending time, like not just online, but adding value and creating messaging and content for people to consume proactively is a really great spend your time. Sound really random, but I'm sure no one's gonna be surprised when I bring this up. Clubhouse, awesome, and a to um because we can't we can't network really. Like the 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 beauty of going out to events and having conversation with business is young people when you're really trying to grow your network and meet new people and get in front of opportunities. Like it's really really hard to do that right now. Clubhouse is a place. I feel like it's the antidote to COVID when it comes to socializing. And if you really invest in that app, you can meet people there and like build real relationships because the authenticity in Clubhouse, you can't manufacture. Like I can take, I can literally spend an hour putting together an Instagram post to make sure it's got the perfect caption and the perfect lighting or whatever. You can't fake authenticity on Clubhouse. You just drop in on audio in real time to talk to people. Way to show yourself. So and connect. So I would highly recommend you kind of look for platforms and communities, clubhouse or somewhere else online because of COVID that you really love and maximize what this time has been us because it's pretty. There she go. Uh, Karina left us. I don't know where she went. Hopefully she'll come back. Um, we only have five more minutes though. But um, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I, I think it is important to find the silver linings in the, the struggles that we have and the things that the world throws at us that we can't do anything about so just making sure that you're you're finding ways to adapt and and those those platforms online the the, the only way that we have right now is, is the best way to do that all right um i'm going to ask one final question to you it's going to be a pretty short question if karina comes back then i guess i'll, I'll bring her back up stage but if not we'll just uh Go from here so one final question that i have for both of you um if you if you were to give out i know jessica you kind of left people with that advice if it's the same advice then go ahead and speak on it but if you were to oh she's back um if you were to say one uh one piece of advice for the students out there what would it be what's the most important thing that you want to tell people when building your brand go ahead Jessica. yeah um don't be afraid to truly be yourself People hire you based on who you are, not what you do. Short and sweet. That's good, good, good. And I think even if you have, uh, I don't know, it's big, I don't have as much experience as you do, but I think even if you have some things that you might not want to share, you might be scared to share, I think that authenticity is, is more important sometimes, right? Than actually like than the, the stuff that you might be scared to share, like, oh, I did this stuff in the past. Maybe I don't want to share this because it isn't relevant or, or I like had a mistake fail or something i think it's like it's still important to be be authentic about that right yes i mean the first chapter of my book is called embrace your shit <laughs> so the things you think are the most scary mm -hmm. are probably the things that have the most value mm -hmm. and um can impact people more than what you even realize so don't be afraid to look to that part of yourself and share who you truly are because that's magic Nice. All righty, Will, you got a you got a piece? Yeah, yeah. I think I think something that goes hand in hand uh, with being authentic is like doing something that you really enjoy doing. Because if you're in an interview and you're and they're asking you like, why do you want this job? If you really don't want the job, you're not going to do a great job of coming across as someone who's like truly passionate about whatever that field may be. And that was some of the best advice that I got from like one of the mentors that I like was lucky enough to meet in, in one of my internships he was like a like consultant like ran his own company and and he just came on and just was like a savage at data science that would come in and just like rip apart every project but he, he basically told me like you know I'm I'm working in, in data science I'd love to be working in like the NFL doing like analytics but they're never going to hire a guy like me uh who's working in the industry that he's he's working in now and he was basically saying like if you don't follow your passion when you're young your standard of living will be too high to switch career paths, um, and you, like you literally, you literally won't be able to afford to do what you want to do because no one's going to be willing to pay you for something you don't have experience in. Um, 
So I, I just wanted to share that piece of advice because that's the best advice that I've ever received as far as career stuff. That's some good stuff. Go, go for it and you never know what's going to happen and then, and then you, you never have any regrets, right? There you go. All right, Karina, let's go. Oh, what do you got? Last piece of advice. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't like know what we were supposed to exactly share when I cut out there, but oh, okay. I can I can ask again if you want. I was just I was yeah. asking, Sorry about that. Um, I I should have known. Um, it was one piece of advice, like the most important piece of advice you'd give people for building their brand. Um. Um. I I mean I feel like the biggest thing that I can't emphasize enough is just executive presence. Like figure out how to make sure that you are building your executive presence in your, if you, especially if you want to start your own company and you want it to be awesome and, you know, make sure you can communicate and make sure you present yourself well, make sure you know how to market what you have in like the best kind of way, you know? So I think that's um, probably the biggest advice that I would have um, for everyone yeah. else. Look it up. I mean, there's tons of information on executive presence on, anything you look at. So just go and try and build up that skill set. Yeah, and remember that percentage chart that she threw up there. Um, it has a lot of different parts, but some of them are more important than others in different ways. You know, you gotta, you gotta have that appearance, you gotta, but you still gotta act the right way, you gotta talk the right way, and um, everything kind of builds in, into each other. So thanks, thanks everyone for sharing. Um, sorry for putting you on the spot there, but you did great. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, so thanks everyone for coming and thank you so much panelists for adapting to, to different things that we were doing here for coming in and, and sharing what you what you do have and for interacting with each other. It was awesome to see the different perspectives that we have together um, from from different walks of life, from different uh, companies, startups, um, the, the corporate America. So um, I want to thank all the audience members too. If you had fun at this um, uh, event and you enjoyed the event, we would love for you to post about it on your social media, like they were saying. Um, it's really important for the brand of this conference. So if you want to post there and you want to really share about it, um, we would love for you to do that and then tag us at Chicago Startup Week and we'll we'll definitely uh, share it onto our page as well so we can really get the word out there of how great this is and how many events we have coming up in the next two days. It's not over yet. Uh, so the next event we do have coming up is um, Social Innovation Panel, a discussion on the intersection of entrepreneurship and positive impact. So that's actually coming up right now. You can actually head on over to the other session. So thanks everybody for coming and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.